Hello and welcome back to the Angerati studio. I'm now joined by Frank, who is the uh, president of ESMEC. Uh, first of all, Hello welcome. Uh, okay. Thank you for joining us, uh, getting some weight off your feet, uh, because we're at uh, hours away from the end of European Utility Week, so I can imagine uh, it's been quite hectic uh, and things like that. And it's quite a good time to be talking to you because uh, you have been able to enjoy some of the sessions, have some of the conversations, look at where we are and uh, where are we in terms of the smart meter, in terms of the readiness, because I've had a few comments from vendors who sat in the exact same chair as you are, going, we're ready, we're ready. And I'm like, going, okay, well, if you're ready, is everybody else ready? Because you aren't the only person in the supply chain. So, so give me a bit of an overview of uh, where we are in that whole piece. So thank you very much. First yeah. of all, to invite me to your living room here. Yeah. It's nice here to be in this setting. It's under nice, and nice chairs sun, as yeah. well, isn't it? <laughs> where we drink. So, You're a bit yeah. space age. Yeah. No, so where are we with, with readiness? So yeah. first of all, I think we already said last year and the year before, we as an industry, we are ready. Um, so I remember my first metering conference, now it's called Utility Week. That goes back seven years. And at that time, everybody was discussing about smart and what is smart and so forth. I think the industry is becoming much more educated. Um, I remember as well five years ago when the European Commission they established their so-called task force on smart metering. It was all about let's answer all the questions we have about smart. Are we ready? Yes. Not only are we ready, we're deploying. Um, so it's not only theory. Um, standards are in place. Um, we have interoperability in place. Um, we have some countries that are in the middle of, of a rollout. So I wouldn't say are we ready for the smart metering. It's, it's there. It's happening. And so, why do you think, um, you know, I've had those comments from vendors who are like going, um, we're, we're ready, but the, we see that there is a bit of a, uh, a lag in investment by utilities and things like that. Uh, is that because they haven't got the contract or is that because there is a genuine, uh, still a little bit of a lag and that what we're, what we're seeing is maybe early adopters or certain regulatory frameworks working faster than others? So first of all, we don't have one market in Europe, okay? Exactly. Let's be clear on that. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I said there, there are projects out there, so we, we can see in Spain um, big deployments. Uh, probably all of us have seen what is happening in the UK. Now there's the announcement that was made a, a few weeks ago by DEC, but we still have a foundation phase. So we have hundreds of thousands of meters that are being rolled out already now, electricity and gas meters. So it's not that it's not happening. And then there's a number of, I would call it pilot projects. So I don't want to correct any of my colleagues that have been sitting in this, in this hot chair, but maybe they meant more that, you know, we would like to see more. So when I go back and look at the third energy package of a regulatory framework we have around uh, deployment of smart, it says that by 80, sorry, by 2020, 80% eight of all households should be smart metered. Now, if you paid uh, attention to what was presented here by the European Commission on Tuesday by uh, Manuel Sanchez, he said, well, guys, we're not going to be at 80%, we're going to be at 74%. Uh, so he has commitment now from the countries that um, we will do it. So it's not about a matter of are we going to do it or not. Uh, we're doing it and here are the plans roll up to 74%. I challenged him in, in, in the session, I said, we don't see the 74% um, because there's a life cycle you have to go through. You have to go through pilot projects, you have to do go through your tendering process and so forth. So what are you saying? Are, are you seeing less than 74%? Yeah, I, I made that clear as well in my statement. So I said, yeah. representing the industry here, I yeah. see that it's level, unfortunately it's less than 74%, which I find a pity. So on one hand, so maybe just coming back to your point as well, you know, is it happening? Yes, it's happening. So, but uh, are we going to reach 80%? I think there's a general understanding that's not happening. So is it 74% or what is the percentage? I would not sit here and guess. But my, my sense is for a moment it's not going to be 74%. Uh, and we're not going to reach the 80% target either. Yeah. And, uh, and is that to do with, uh, again, you're absolutely right. You know, we aren't one framework. There, right. there are lots of different ways of doing it. And, uh, you know, for example, the, in the UK, we've got a very, I suppose, unique <laughs> attitude to Europe. We, we moan about all the uh, regulation that's yeah. coming through, but when it does come through, we uh, seem to apply it very, very ruthlessly, and, the, right. and there are all these penalties to utilities right. if they don't hit the right. targets and things like that. Um, is that one of the issues that actually there is not enough pain to hit the 80% in certain geographies where 
which is almost letting the side down if we're a team. So, so before I answer your, your, yeah. that question, yeah. I just want to make one comment that the business case is, is, uh, is positive in, in the countries and for utilities. So it's not that we have to push something down the throat. Um, it makes sense what we're doing. So it's not uh, we're just doing this. So well, we, I, I when mean, we're saying the commission, right? Yeah, yeah. So coming back to your question on, um, um, so I have to. Can you just help me again? So yeah, I'll, yeah, uh, sure. I, I would say it's like I'm gonna. If if we're a, if we're a team, okay. there's some members in the team who are playing a bit better so, than others. So for me, so. it's about translation. So yeah. it's always the case, right? So yeah. you have um, you have Europe. I think have done a great job. But now it's about translation into the countries. Now, we had that debate, so I'm representing ESMEC. Um, so we had that debate internally. We are an European organization, even though my paid job is with one of the suppliers into the smart grid um, uh, industry. Now, are we sure now that it's being translated into the countries? Take UK as a good example. There's very, been very good cooperation between, you can say, the European-led activities and what is happening in, in country. Now, we think that we need to put some more fuel in there and help the country in the translation. So even though all business cases had to be presented to the European Commission last year in September, uh, which is more or less the case, I think the, there's still a few countries. Now the translation from, and I wouldn't call it regulation, I would more call it standardization work that has been done, still has to be translated into the, um, to the national framework. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's where we, as ESMEC as well, is going to spend some time. We're not going to do it in, in, in the countries, but we'll support the national organizations. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I would imagine, and again, this may be a naive statement, and uh, I, I make them because it pulls out interesting answers. Right. You know, every time I, uh, I talk to people, they're saying, yeah, well, we're going to have to do a pilot. You know, and yeah, yeah, well, we're going to have to do a pilot. How many pilots do you need on a smart meter? Surely, can't you just go, hey, you've done a pilot. What have you found? You've done a pilot. What have you found? Okay, okay, got it enough data with enough pilots, I don't need to do a pilot, I just need to assimilate that knowledge and do the right thing. Right. So first of all, the products and the standards are in place, okay? Mm. Now, when we talk about pilots, now I'm not a utility, but let me try to speak for utility for a second. Now, even though we have done pilots and the technology is there, and the technology works, and that has been proven, I still have a lot of job to do. So you can imagine that suddenly I start communicating with all my devices in the field. I, I didn't use that in, in, in the past. I get a lot of data. That data needs to be aggregated and it needs to be integrated into my billing system, my customer service system and so forth. So we're not putting words in your mouth. So I, I believe that when you hear that argument, it's not about the technology uh, that I have to do with the, the pilots. So what they're really piloting is the understanding of the new paradigm. It's if the end-to-end. Like, end. Yeah. It's the end-to-end. End. How yeah. do I get the data that I'm going to read out there with, from the meter? How am I going to get that into my billing system? And I think all of us have been involved in, in IT projects or um, yes. even in, in, in previous jobs. Yeah. We, I think we uh, appreciate the, uh, uh, the challenge. Yeah. Uh, so some utilities are further than others, but I would say that in general, my understanding talking to utilities as well, most of them, they are getting, they're pretty far. Uh, so it's not about, I'm hesitant, should we do it or not? So it's just a matter of how am I going to do it and how can I take up the risk? So that's a very, uh, yeah, I, I can really say that that's a very business pragmatic thing. It's just like, I, if I'm going to move into this new world, let me try and understand as much as I can about it so that I'm not learning on the job, which is a dangerous thing to right. do as a utility, I would right. imagine. And uh, so where are you? Uh, you know, if I turned you a little bit into a reporter from uh, the, the the conference and things like that, what have been some of the more interesting discussions about? If we move away for a second, are we going to hit eighty percent or not hit eighty percent? I personally, I, I think uh, you may well be right with where your notion is, but we will get there. At the tipping point has exactly. been reached, um, so let's relax a little bit about that. Where do you see some of the biggest, now that, and carrying on the conversation, now that all of this in, people are starting to see the data, what are some of the biggest innovations that you've seen where, wow, this is quite interesting how the data is being used or the enablement in terms of a business change? Right. I'm always trying to come from a consumer, so I think there's huge benefits for utility. But you know, take my case, I live in an area where once a year I get a small postcard 
and I'm supposed to go out and find my meter and I have to take those numbers or digits that I read on my meter, <laughs> I enter them into a, a website and then, you know, magic happens. Yeah. I get an invoice and I'm being told, over oh, the last 12 months you've had uh, the following profile. I have absolutely no transparency on, on how I'm using my energy. Now, with Smart Happening, uh, with, um, with all the projects we're seeing, suddenly I'm empowered. I, as a consumer, I get access, real-time access, maybe not real-time access to my data, but at least I get access to my data on a regular basis. I can see how I'm using my energy. I can start changing my behavior. Um, I can start being in control of what I'm doing. Walk around the floor here at this exhibition, you will see there's a lot of nice uh, new applications, either web applications for your smartphones and so forth. And uh, that A, can give you peace of mind, but you know, can help you as well, being in control of how you're using your power. Going forwards, um, I think I heard before some discussions around uh, um, how the white goods, whatever you have in your house, uh, they have now microchips now going forward. And I don't want to talk about in 20 years, um, we we'll see all that, but you know, I envisage going forward, you know, our house will be connected um, to some of those devices and I can start having control of, I would know that my refrigerator needs to be, have maintenance or I, I have an issue. Some of us are traveling, you know, peace of mind as well that I can, can check, you know, a small cockpit, how's my house, house doing? Um, and that changes the dial of the discussion entirely towards convenience. Right. You know, uh, and is a bit different from, I think, some of the discussions which have perhaps had an over-focus on tariff and things like that, right. rather than saying, hey, here is convenience. Right. Here is uh, convenience of control. Uh, if you want to automate your entire house, you can, because right. we, we've got one standard uh, and things like that. And, and you're right, I, I, I am also slightly bored of the, in 20 years' time, your fridge will order your eggs for you and things like that. And, yeah, and we don't have to sit here, somebody in the machines will do it. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. But what is interesting, and uh, as we uh, sort of coming to the end of our time here, uh, uh, what is your feeling about how this industry is now finally getting consumer engagement? Do, do you think it's starting to really get it? It is. So, you know, I can only speak for, for some of the work we have done. So we have done some st studies. One of them is the Empower Demand study. And it's clearly so taken, I think it's uh, more than 35 different projects, um, smart projects, and looked at the learning. So it's clear that when you, you start having those demand response applications and, and, and devices in place, you know, I'm as a consumer, suddenly I, I start feeling more empowered on what I'm doing. And I, I always do, used to use the anal analog analogy with, with the... Uh, with the telephone. So back in the good old days when I did this, I uh, would do this to my wife, my kids, what are you doing? So there again, I didn't have any granularity on my invoice. Now, you know, you cannot imagine that you don't have control of your telephone invoice. And, and this is just, it's not a revolution, it's an evolution. And, and that's how I see it. No, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, just one, one, one final piece on that. Are you uh, seeing sort of uh, certain pockets of uh, excellence come out from uh, uh, from the utilities, is there a is there a story that you've heard at this event where you're like, uh, well, that is quite an innovative way in which to, and it's not, I I, I think there's a fine line between consumer engagement and consumer behaviour. Right. Uh, uh, if you were to just pull one out, and you're within your rights to say, actually, no, we're just doing. Yeah, what but we I, do I don't better. want to. I'm not going to mention a specific utility, but you know, mm -hmm. take the example. Uh, I have an outage. I know that I have an outage or an outage is happening. Uh, and, and we have a utility that basically now proactive would send an SMS out to the customer saying, hey, by the way, there's an outage in your area. We are aware of it. You know, we know where it is and it's going to be fixed in half an hour. So again, as a consumer, I might not like to have an outage, but you know, I don't have to call them because proactive, they know it already and they've informed me that there's an issue and they're dealing with it. So again, from a consumer point of view, you know, it gave me a peace of mind that, you know, they know what they're doing and, and I'm, I, they're engaging with me. Yeah, and uh, that brings me back to experience I had recently where we had to have uh, engineering works in our street and right. the, the poor chap had to knock on every single door. Exactly. Know, rather than getting on with fixing it. Yes. So, so it's like, I, uh, well, listen, uh, thank you for taking the time to be here. It's been, it's been great talking to you. I, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this session. And uh, Frank mentioned a few sessions in the conference earlier on. 
those are all available on Encherati and you can go ahead and search for those. You use, input the speaker name that usually gets them uh, to come up uh, uh, quite quickly and uh, you can watch all of those just to contextualize some of your answers. And thanks again for watching.